our Father's word, delivered by Moses, who, though he was, in a sense, a priest, a Levite, he talked in such a way that he laid the law down in lay terms whereby most anyone could understand it because he told it exactly as it was, exactly as it happened, giving a simplistic um, um, recall and recount of exactly what happened. Makes it very simple to understand above other books of the law. So um, we had come to the eighth chapter in a sense, what I feel God would have you know from this eighth chapter is uh, you don't amount to a whole lot without God. You can run your family if you want to and you leave God out of the equation. I'm sorry, you're not going very far. But with God and his word as the center point of your family, you're going to be successful. That's, that is, is that an oversimplification? No, that is a fact. And that is a fact that I have observed working over and over or not working because it was not complied with many, many years. It's a proven fact. So I, I would say this chapter wants you to know what our nation and what we as individuals can amount to if we don't follow God, if we don't take the good advice he gives us. With that having been said, is Groundwork, chapter 8, verse 1, a word of wisdom from our Father in Yeshua's name, and it reads, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, not just to observe, but to do them, that ye may live, that you can do what? That you can live, that means eternally, and multiply, that means to be blessed, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Now you see there's a condition there. You've got to meet God's way, or I'm sorry, you're, you're just pumping air, that's all. And that's this, there's nothing new under the sun, and God is the same today as he was that day, because he never changes. So quite frankly, if you can't pick up on the condition that is uh, tied to the fact of being blessed, well, you miss the boat, don't you? And I'll bet your life's a mess at the same time. Listen to your father, and you will do well. You keep, do, keep, hear, and do the commandments of God, and you will be blessed. Why? He loves you. Verse 2. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble. To do what? To humble thee and to prove thee. To know what was in thine heart, what's in your mind, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. In other words, whether you could listen or not listen. Uh, do you think Father doesn't prove you and test you? He's certainly not going to ask you or bless you to a point where he can use you if he can't trust you. And he's not going to take your word for it that he can trust you. You're going to have to document it. You're going to have to prove that you are a producer of fruit. You're going to have to prove to him that when he puts a little pressure on you, you don't melt like hot butter, that you're a can-do type individual. And so it is with a nation. But God, well, he put those people out in the wilderness and they wandered around 40 years. Why? They disobeyed him. They would not follow his simple instructions when he had proven to them, documented, that he would take care of them. They balked. And the reason they were out there was to, that God could prove them. He got rid of one generation as you well know, because they would not enter the promised land. Verse 3, And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, let you get a little old uh, feeling of hunger in your tummy, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not. You, you didn't know it existed. Neither did thy fathers know. It had never seen, been seen before by human beings. That he might make thee 
know, now he, why did he do it? That he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by, the, by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. And of course, you rec should recognize that as part of the temptation when Christ was in the wilderness being tempted of the devil, when the devil tempted him um, and uh, when he had hungered 40 days, he quoted this scripture. And of course, Satan quoted also scripture. But what is it said then? That you have to have God's word. Angel's food alone wouldn't do it. You've got to have the very word of God. And what is the word? The living word is Christ, of course. You've got to have them with you or you're not going to make it in any class at all. You're going to be a, a bumbling failure all your life. If you do not have God with you, you would be like they were wandering the wilderness. What did God do? God was with them. God took care of them. Otherwise, they would have starved. But it was the word that was being taught there, the law read to them, that they absorbed, and still they went bad. But you know, it doesn't take a very bright person to learn by example. God blesses those that listen. God blesses those that keep his word. And to seal the contract with God, you must do them. Now, nobody's perfect, and we all fall short. But at the same time, your effort in attempting to do them, he counts as perfect on repentance. So it isn't that difficult to please God. He loves his children. They mess up. He forgives them. He's not, as you've heard me say before, the type of God that's a wonder who I can zap today. He, he, he loves his children. He doesn't want to zap them. He wants to help them. And he has from the beginning of time, that is to say, let's put a condition on it, those that would listen. Without God, you don't amount to much. Verse 4. Thy raiment waxed, this is to say, those that wandered in the wilderness that 40 years when he was with them and caring for them, a pillar of fire at night or cloud by day to shadow them. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these 40 days. Your shoes didn't wear out, nor did your clothing. Now that was, that was a supernatural, a divine intervention. You know that, I know that. How many pair of shoes have you bought in a 40-year period if you have to be that, happen to be that old? Verse 5. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart, that's to say, you think about this in your mind, that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. He disciplines you. I believe that most of the trouble in this country today and the reason we have violent acts in our schools is that man has placed God totally out of the school system, much like Russia through communism placed God out of the churches. And when you do that, God is not happy. And people run amok. Minds grow twisted without the stability of the word. And it's a real sad situation that children are not disciplined. I realize that state laws almost have come to the point that it prohibits a parent uh, correcting their children. But I have to say, if it is done properly and adequately, in, that is to say, disciplining the child, the child will love you more and be a great, much greater person for the discipline. Children like to know where the line is and what happens when they cross it. So big brother isn't quite that big yet. Pay attention to your children. Let them know you love them. Um, it's, if you ignore your children, they, they have time to build stuff that is destructive and you don't even know anything about it. I, you should know what your children are doing. Take an interest after all. Your heavenly Father takes an interest in what you do, 
he observes, and if you do well, he will bless you. He will see that you're successful because he can change the minds of people that, are, that interact with you. That's what makes successful people and successful nations. Our nation has always had very disciplined troops. And this Christian nation and all Christian nations in the world are blessed by God. Why? Well, it's, do you think it's an accident? Uh, I, I mean, without fail, look at them today and see who your powers are. Those that try to bring freedom, those that protect the rights and the humanity of others. And basically, you will see what type nation that is, the house of Israel. I'm not talking about the house of Judah, though they are a good house, but the house of Israel is, uh, makes up most of the Christian nations today. And they are blessed, though we have bad things that happen when you go to sleep at the switch and do not discipline your children or discipline yourself, you're, you're headed for trouble. It's that simple. It is the word. The word is written. And if you love someone, you cannot help presenting discipline. Now, being an old Marine, an old combat Marine, naturally, my discipline comes forth pretty well because many people that have little tender, sweet, little old sugar sweet hearts, they think I'm a little bit on the rough side. Well, true love can be a little tough sometimes. That's what discipline is. If someone, example, someone will, it'll be obvious maybe from a note they pass to me that they're lazy. And when I get on their case about being lazy and that God won't bless, there'll be some bleeding heart Christian say, you, it's just unfair to that person. You don't know, but maybe most likely two weeks la later, I'll get a letter from that person thanking me that they got a hold of their bootstraps and picked their self up and are now on a road to recovery. I, you know, you can't coddle someone that's misbehaving. You chastise them, you discipline them. After all, our word disciple, the word disciple comes from the word discipline. Christ disciplined the 12. That's why they were called disciples, students. So, uh, quite frankly, discipline should be a strong part of your family. And if we continue letting socialistic, liberal, know-it-alls interfere in the workings of our school systems, it's going to get worse instead of better. Don't, don't blame gun control. Blame discipline in the family and in people that go to courts, socialists and liberals that go to court and drive God and Christianity out of the schools. Therefore, uh, it is a strange thing. But there is no dignity when you cannot respect people's religions in the diverse manner in which they are. But it's very illegal, apparently, to be a Christian and to attend a school today. Now, I know there are exceptions to every rule. Discipline is necessary. And you don't have to worry about what the school does. Discipline your own children in a loving way. Certainly never, never, never discipline a child when you're angry, period. Verse 6, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him, to revere him, to love him. Now, what does this mean? If you keep God with you, and that's what his word is, you're going to be blessed. If you leave God out of your life, you're going to be cursed. You're not going to amount to a flip. You're a nobody. Because without God's blessings, there's only one other alternative, and that's Satan's cursings. He may promise you the sun, and you may think in crooked ways you can shortchange people, but it will catch up with you overnight, or sooner or later by the wayside. You can count on it. Why? God will see to it, and he happens to be in control. Verse 7, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains, and depths.
that sprang out of villages, valleys rather, and hills. Now listen to this description, it's important. I want you to picture the deserts, if you would, of, of the Middle East. Verse eight, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey. All three types of, of trees are mentioned there, the fig, the olive, and the vine. What land has all that? An abundance, a surplus. Do you think God was lying to the people? No, he wasn't. Naturally, we live in a land that is blessed. We live in a superpower of superpowers. It's no accident. Wake up. God is true to his word. Verse 9. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Uh, thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou, shalt, uh, thou mayest dig brass. I mean, look at the nations. Do you think the Middle East has all of these? Why is it they sing the song in Glastonbury, England to this day, Joseph of Arimathea, the tin man? Why? Because he had tin mines in Europe, not on the Sinai. Because it doesn't produce, maybe a little pocket here or there, but not just mountains of it, as there is where the house of Israel has settled. There is no accidents. God blesses those that bless him. When you look to the Americas, when you look to the Christian nations of this world, then you will find those blessings, and it is no accident. And my mind runs instantly to Genesis chapter 27, whereby the curse basically was placed upon Esau because he did not love God, and God hated Esau, that he was made to settle above the parallel in which abundance flows. That's why, unfortunately, this has no play whatsoever on the Russian people of today, but that's why Esau settled that area, and I'm sorry, it's not a producer. Might have a good year occasionally, but there'll be more bad than good. And when you leave God out of the equation to boot, you got big trouble. Many Russian people have God in their lives, I hasten to add. Discipline, God's contract, God's blessings, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look around the world today and see where those blessings flow. Verse 10, when thou hast eaten and art full, he's, this is a little bit of a warning here, be careful, when you've eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. You better never forget to thank him. You better never partake of a meal that you don't thank him for it because he owns the good earth. Somebody might have a little deed, but they'll die and it'll go to someone else. God owns it all. And your, uh, the very nurture you receive comes from your father, the same as, as he fed manna, not the same, but on the same principle of he feeding manna, angel's food, to the children in the, bla uh, the bare desert is that he allows bounty, bountiful supplies of food and grains to be produced on the good land. It's his. There are no accidents. Verse 11, beware. You know, when somebody's full and they, they got their tummy full, you know, and they got plenty of everything, they kind of forget to pray. It's just natural. Sorry, that's the way it is. And they like to play and turn away from God when it was God that gave them the blessings to start with. He gives a little warning here. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day. Learn the difference in those things. That that is civil, that that is spiritual, and that that is moral the laws pertaining thereto, that that is fulfilled, that that is not. And if you're not able to dig it out for yourself, I have two tapes titled The Law, which covers all three and teaches you the difference therein. You need to know that because it's an order from God. Beware. And beloved, 
Let me oversimplify it again for you. What is it saying? Without God, you're nothing. Without God, without his word, you're going you're gonna to fail in everything you attempt, basically. There's no longevity to it. Why? You don't have God's blessings. And God is very jealous. So I suppose the, the moral to chapter 8 is keep God in your family. Why? Because it is a part of your family. He is a part of your family. Why? He is your father. He's not some cloud or force floating around in space. You are created in his image, meaning he made you in his likeness. Why? Because you're his. You are his child. And as it is written in Ezekiel chapter 18, 4, every living soul belongs to God. It isn't yours to give. He already owns it. And therefore, he has the right to do with your soul as he chooses. Why? Because it's his. He's your father. There is a kinsman redeemer effect there, a law. And uh, if you try to cut yourself away from him, it's probably the most stupid thing you could ever do in your life. Because you go into uh, wh what's left, Satan, ignorance. Oh, but you don't understand. I'm well educated. No, it's ignorance to separate yourself from God and your country, a nation that is blessed. Pure unadulterated ignorance. That's a little taste of discipline, beloved. Facts hurt some people. But you have people today that would rather pull away from d discipline and preach, well, everybody should be the same. Whether they work or not, they should have the same. That's ignorance. That's not biblical. If a man doesn't work, he shouldn't eat. That's biblical. Verse uh, 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 chapter uh, 3 of 2 Thessalonians, verse 10 stipulates, if a man won't work, don't let him eat. Don't feed him. And don't worry. That's love. Why? He won't starve. There's a, God installed a little micro switch between your belly button and your backbone. And when they get real close together, that little micro switch goes off and the person says, work, work, let me have some work so I can eat. All right? It just makes a better person for him. It's called discipline. It's called God's word. It's called his law. It may humble you a little bit, but I would rather be humbled and receive God's blessings and have plenty. And with those blessings, be rich in many ways, not riches as some men might count them. But, beloved, without God, you're nothing. These people that are so intelligent that like to doubt God, well, do you really believe there is a God? Now, that is a stupid statement, question, all right? Do you really believe there's a God? Well, look around today at the nations that have basically driven him out, and I'm speaking of communism and socialism. You show me one that doesn't have people starving and that are begging the Christian nations for money and for grain and for the blessings that God bestows upon us to the point that their people are starving or deprived and their living standards are a shame compared to ours. And you want to bring that here? Now, you think that's intelligent? That is ignorant. That is stupid. Those are good words when they are applied as fact. Because it is a fact. God blesses those that bless him. Without God, I'm sorry, you're nothing. A nation without God is what? Nothing. You will see them and you mark it. They will be coming to a nation. That was, our, uh, many might say, well, America is certainly not a Christian nation anymore. Oh, yes, it is. Our Constitution, which is our God's, uh, uh, copy of God's Word, because that Constitution was drawn from the Word of God, and it rules this nation. You like it or lump it. That's the way it is. It takes, uh, it takes a, a, an act of Congress 
in almost a majority to change that constitution. The writers thereof knew that times would get rough and fixed it so it could not be changed easily. And it is the word of God, basically. Allow me that, it's true. And that's the reason this nation is blessed. And that was our founding father's idea when they came here and set up and established this nation. So follow the blessings of God and you will see God's children that love him and maintain the commandments, the judgments, and the statutes as God has commanded. We're growing further away from it. But as long as he would say to um, Abraham concerning Lot, if there be ten, only ten righteous men, will you not destroy it? Remember it. There ended up being only one, and God did not destroy it. So your vote counts a great deal when you try to obey God's word. Well, perhaps I have rambled. I do not call that a digression, but a set of given facts of what life is like in this world today and what is what many would say well what are, what's wrong what's going wrong well it's very simple people don't listen to facts verse 12 lest when thou hast eaten and art full and has built goodly houses and dwelt therein oh, old Jeshurun run from the song of Moses we'll get to it in Deuteronomy 32 13 and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, you're a rich nation. 14. Thine heart, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And here we go back to square one. You forget, and without God, you're nobody. With God, you're blessed. You have plenty. You have a nice home. Don't forget that. Well, uh, that's just exactly the things I want. You can't have it without God and have any happiness there, peace of mind. Sorry, that's the way it is. 15. Who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought and were where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint? God did. Without him, you're nothing. With him, there's no pain or suffering. He blessed them as an example. If you want to look at the trip in the wilderness uh, for that 40 years, which is probation, then let it be a lesson that with God, he will take care of you. Without him, you're dead. All right? 16 who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. At the latter end, he wants to do good. Do you know why it says manna, which thy fathers knew not? Because what does the word manna mean? The word manna means, what's that? Okay. That's, when you say the word manna, you're saying, what's that? Well, it was angel's food. That happened to be what it was. Don't ever forget it. Given by God. And the real manna of these end times is God's truth taught properly and absorbed by those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, whereby there are good, righteous people, though we fall short on repentance, making perfect. God's plan, the fulfillment thereof in these end times. Those of you that want to make a little side trip at uh, home study for today, make a note of Numbers chapter 24, verses 14 through 24. It'll even tell you what a lot of the nations will do or the people of the nations in the end times. Verse 17. And thou say in thine heart, this is when you're, that's just when you're, uh, fat, dumb, and happy, all right, with too much, and haven't given God the credit. This is what you say. And thou say in thine heart, that's in your own mind, my power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. 
Well, you're lying to yourself if you believe that. It's God's blessings that brought it to you. And don't ever forget it. Why? Because you were trying to do his word. Verse 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, and don't you forget him. For it is he. Now, don't ever forget this, beloved. Remember this verse, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers, and it is this day, and I say to you, it is this day. Now, you, you actually in your lifetime will hear someone say, well, I just wished I knew how to get my hands on some cash, some wealth. Well, I'll tell them, haven't you ever read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18? It's pretty easy to remember. Just give me an 8 and then give me an 18. Add 10 to it. And you've got the reason why you've got a lot of failures in this world. Because there's only one source of true wealth, and you just heard it. It's our Father, because He only gives a person what a person is capable of taking care of. And as you grow and as you mature in His commandments, in His Word, in the doing thereof, He will add more to you. Do you know why? That He won't give you more than you can take care of? Because some slick willy is going to beat you out of it before the sun goes down. Because you haven't got enough sense to take care of it. That's why you don't have anything. You haven't learned Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 yet. And I know now many are going to be offended by that. But hey, that's tough stuff. If, it, if you're offended, it's truth. It's fact. It's God's Word. Like it, lump it, but love it, and you will be blessed. God made the promise a long ago. You claim it. Hold it to your heart. Hold it to your bosom. Claim it and do it. That is to say, what we've learned in this chapter, keep God with you. Don't separate yourself, and don't let some slick willy try to talk you out of following God. It'll get your nation in trouble. Verse 19, And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish, as a nation even. Look what happened to Russia. Do you know what? They closed the churches and made grain, grain storages out of them, and without God, they didn't have any grain to put in there anyway. Sometimes they put machinery in them. I mean, you've got living proof today in the various systems that have been chosen to be followed in these end times as to how God's blessings flow and happiness and peace of mind is found. And it's so simple a child can understand it. It's too bad some adults can't. Verse 20, to complete the chapter. I mean, that's God's promise. You're going to perish. 20, as the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall you perish because you would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. The choice is yours. That applies to family. It applies to your nation. And thank God there are still enough good, solid citizens in this nation that love to hear the word of God taught, that it can be taught without having to beg for money or anything else, and people are wise enough that they support it. You're looking at living proof that God blesses those that do his word rather than the words of men and traditions and churchiosity, but teach his word and lay it out before the hungry, that it can be absorbed and people are educated as to how to be successful and appreciate the very blessings that God has given us.